Check this thing out. It's a brand new Mini Cooper. It's a hell of a nice car. It's got everything that opens and shuts in it too. You don't know how do you open it? Okay, it does everything. Keyless start thing. It's even got this round fluoro thing. Even the mirror goes down when you're reversing. Makes all these little noises. It even has this heads up thing. XW won't do any of this. Huh. Look at this, it just goes away. <laughs> I thought my uh, 2010 Commodore was good. It's uh, the very, very first of the Series 2 cars. And uh, they started building them in September 2010, and that's when I bought mine uh, off the showroom floor at Penfolds. But uh, this car, this does a lot more than that. Even the leather's nicer. So in this chapter, we're going to be re-trimming some seats. Um, we're just going to put the rear squab in, which is the back part here, uh, until such time as we put carpet in, but I can hang that that's fine. This is trimmed in very, very robust black fabric which is almost uh, the same sort of thing that XE Falcon GLs were trimmed in it's horrible stuff, it's like carpet um, and it, it, uh, I got these at a reasonable price, people ask stupid money for these and it even came with its very own cigarette burn now it's worth noting that XW's, uh, XT's and XR's use different rear seats than what XY's do this is actually an XY one and the only way you can tell is on the cushion which is this bottom bit they're much squarer in this area here. The XW, XR and XT ones are far more rounded, which I'm told is to allow more room for rear seat passengers to get in, but they did change them back to this type here. This isn't fitting too well in the corner, so I'm just sort of planning a bit. It's important to use a plane or something because it won't be too aggressive and fray the masonite. So I'm just taking a little bit off there and I'll do the same on the other side. And of course you have the piastre resistance for the back window, which is this classic white Venetian. I don't want to scratch it up, but we'll take it out. What's that? My son's here, he's going to start making stupid noises in a minute. That's normally what he does when I'm doing this. It's pretty green. It's just the, um... Oh, that's the thing that goes on the window. Uh -huh. I thought it was like a window. I'm going to get this louver in and put this Venetian in. It's just a matter of, he's being a funny guy, is he? It's just a matter of pulling it up and putting pressure on it while you nip it up. And that'll sort of hold it in. I don't like things putting pressure on the seal, but it'll look pretty good when it's finished. This is my daughter's car and I had the windscreen removed and there's bits of rust here. And this is quite common on these, this is a Holden Nova, it's just an AE92 Corolla. And uh, the best thing to do with this sort of thing, none of it's gone through, it's all surface rust and they're really quite common for it and the best thing to do, um, according to the windscreen guy which makes perfect sense, is pour 15. So two coats of pour 15, we'll remove the urethane around that, uh, two coats of pour 15 and the urethane primer that they use will adhere to that really well and then we can have a new screen put in in a couple of days. But we've got to push this out of the way too because I've got to unpack my XW and do more work. I painted this bonnet yesterday so it's not been buffed, it's very orange peely but I'm just trying to set it up, it's a little bit too far forward there. It's good on the other side but it's also sitting a mile up the back. But it's just a slow process. Well, I'm just going to just mess around it a bit so that um, I can sort of adjust one bit. I've got the guard sitting right out too, which I can bring in after. But if I can get it, that's not cool. That's not cool. All right, I'll have to undo the other side as well. 
Well, you can see the bonnet's on. I haven't buffed it yet. It's still really orange peely, but I've been mucking around with these gaps and I had a huge gap on this side um, and not enough gap on that side. And I've literally um, just undone the, uh, the guard bolts on both sides, bolt under here, bolt in the center there, and just move the whole clip over about two millimeters. And uh, it seems to have evened that up. But the problem I'm having, of course, is this has to be spaced up. This, this guard here is crap. I spent a lot of time trying to get it straight. Um, had issues with gaps on the side there. Had issues with it being too long down there. Um, there's a gap here. It, it's rubbish. I'm going to change this guard. Um, I've got two litres of the uh, Wimbledon White left. Um, <clears throat> but once it's had its roadworthy, um, I'm going to buy a new guard for it. Because um, this, this it's, it's rubbish. It's no good. And I'll stick that on eBay for about 20 bucks. Well, it appears that the width of this underlay is pretty much spot on. It's a bit short here. I'll put some more up the sides there. And it's sort of gathered and wrinkly, so you sort of cut it and make it fit nice and snugly. And just a little bit of glue onto the floor, just so it doesn't shift around under the carpet. But what I want to do is I want to change the... I want to cover these bits here um, behind the back seat. Um, so I'm just sort of getting a feel for how much I've got. I've got three metres, which did underneath the... Um, what do you call it? Parcel tray. And it looks like it's going to do all the all the floor as well. So whatever off cuts are left, I reckon we'll just have enough to do it. Okay, so here's our squad. We're going to start by taking the trim off here, and we'll check the frame out and the padding. The first thing we need to do is flip it over, get some side cutters, and take this off. And these are C clips or hog rings if you prefer, and you can just grab them with side cutters and just twist them off like that. So we'll take all these off. And then we can unbolt the armrest uh, from the frame. When you take these off, just stick them in your hand, you can put them straight in the bin. Because the last thing you need is a puncture. Oops. You just sort of pull it over and flick it inside out to release it. You can see the padding in this thing isn't too bad at all. One thing you need to take out is you need to take these listing wires out because we're going to reuse them, they're hard and steel. So we'll take both of those out. We've got a lovely trim kit here. Had this for well over a year, about 18 months or so. And it's got all the seat covers we need. So that's obviously the um, cushion on the bucket seat. That's this one. That's the swab. We've got to find a new one. Just got this sort of sitting over. I'm just going to stretch it over the corners. I haven't put the wires in yet. It'll be all wrinkly, but we can fiddle around with that and get all that out. Now, even though the phone's been worn in this, on the back, it's got a new frame stitched in, so it should be okay. Wrap it over. It'll give us a a very vague, I mean it looks terrible now, but once we've sort of fiddled with it a bit we should have some success. We'll just sort of feed it in there. And this gives it a bit of strength to pull over and clip into place. Come on, come on, come on. They catch a bit. Some of them are folded over and they're a lot easier to put in. Um, the straight ones, this one has serrations in it which will prevent it from moving sideways at any time in the future because it'll be clicked, or clipped I should say, where those serrations are. So we'll go all the way in. This one has wires going all down the centre too, but the seat hasn't. It hasn't got provision for it, so I don't know why it's like that. We can sort of just manipulate the, the vinyl round and try and get rid of any wrinkles or gatherings. Don't be too harsh on me because don't forget, this has been sitting in a plastic bag in my study for nearly two years. I got this trimming kit actually before I was ready to and it was a zero dollar auction and I paid three hundred ninety five dollars for the whole thing on eBay. So a lot of them are coming at twelve hundred so if it's not absolutely perfect I don't care because I didn't pay anything for it really. Get some more hog rings. I've got a few wrinkles because it's been in the bag for so long 
I reckon they'll eventually wear it wear down, but I will hang it in the car for now. These are just stapled into a bit of timber. Gotta get all these staples out. There's one there. See? And it's the same with the um, the other seeds. So all you do is you just turn them inside out and roll them down to take them out. You'll see this has plastic in here. And that would have been put in by the trimmer who did this. And that helps the cover slide over. So they just put a bit of plastic there. That's actually moved around. Normally you would put it over the top and that'll help the, the new cover slide over. just painted this one I think it looks a little bit more accurate although it's got what looks like a hair there which is a pity I should have put the sticker in a different spot whatever the case I did a bit of a better job with that one than the other it looks nicer well without the fuel tank in we can just fill this rear axle up I also um, made it easier putting the rear window in all the moldings on and with the boot channel on uh, the rear shock is on and then we can sort of put the tank in last Another thing I've done is I've left this gear oil out in the sun just to make it a bit more viscous because it's just too slow running in the cooler weather. It just makes it a much tidier, a much simpler way of doing it. I bought the tank 18 months ago now and it's been sort of taking up a lot of room in the garage. It's getting in the way but um, we're almost ready to put it in. Well the wind's up, it looks like there's going to be a bit of a storm. Have a look at this for something very dodgy. Falcon Sports Exhaust. This is uh, just a very temporary thing until I get the proper dual exhaust fitted. It's made up of um, six cylinder Falcon 221 uh, engine pipe, which I made those drop pipes just so I don't get gas all over the, so I don't damage the underside coating. And there's a Mustang um, bit of engine pipe and more six cylinder Falcon pipe. It's all just pretty, tacked, it's tacked together pretty poorly, but at the end of the day, it'll work to, uh, as a temporary measure. Well, I was going to do the trimming in this uh, chapter, but I've decided not to. This is absolutely terrible. Um, it's not looking at all like I want it to. And I'm a little bit concerned because a lot of this wrinkly stuff is due to the way that the cover's fitted. Now, when I took the original cover off here, I was a little bit surprised that there was no um, slit in the foam, if you like, for this listing. The listing's a little um, calico envelope, which those wires go through to give it that pulled in look uh, around the foam. So these sort of puff out a little bit. So this didn't have them, which worried me, or at least it didn't worry me. I just thought it was odd because it's an XY squab. But what really raised my suspicion is the fact that this bottom frame, this uh, cushion frame, doesn't go back far enough. It's sitting right out from here, and it's hard up against this area here. Now, this looks like an XY one because it's square around this area here. X, R's, T's and W's are a lot rounder like we said before, so it looks like an XY one, but it's not. This looks to me to be a ZD Fairlane one, which would explain why there's no cuts in the foam there, and it'll also explain why it's hard up against there, because ZD Fairlane's, that dog leg is further back. The ZD Fairlane has a longer wheel wheelbase, and so that's what I think's happened. Um, I've got no other explanation which is for why it doesn't fit. And of course you can see here, those retention wires that go against that bracket are uh, nowhere near where they're meant to be either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this frame and modify, weld in a piece there so it goes further back, it fits in properly here uh, the springs are stuffed on this part, the springs in the back are fine but the, these ones are broken and there's lots and lots of damaged springs there that are all busted up which need to be replaced so I'm not going to do any trimming in this one that's a mess as well, look at that I have to uh, modify these frames, put new springs in get some extra padding just to make it look a lot better and so that way it'll fit. So in this chapter we're not going to do uh, trimming, I've changed my mind, we'll do some other stuff instead.
So, where are we at? Well, I've done the final plumbing on the washers. They're all in and looking rather good there. I've got to get that rubber um, sort of trim that goes along there. I haven't got that yet. So that's all done. Got the fuel all hooked up. Um, I'd like it. I've tried to leave some slack there, but I, I might have to try and put a loop or something. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I just want a little bit more play in case the engine talks over and I don't want to pull that off. It, it, it won't pull off, but I don't want to break if you know what I mean. Uh, I've got a new sender unit there, got to do that. It's got one of those spade lug terminal things on the top and apparently normal spade lugs, lugs fit, but they don't seem to. So I've got to wire that up and figure that bit out. So the new fuel pumps in. Um, my dodgy exhaust is down there, my temporary dodgy exhaust. So that's all looking good. So as far as I'm concerned, the engine bay is virtually almost finished. Um, just got to hook the coil up as well. So there's just those very, very small details. So that's all looking pretty good. Um, although the heater box isn't in yet, we can address that later. Around the back, the rear axle's full now. Uh, the rear shockers are fitted. I don't know if you can see it there. There you go, there's one, there's the other. So that's all looking good. Um, just before I put the, the fuel tank in, I'm just going to jump in here again, put a seal in, a boot seal. I've got to touch that up or I scratched it, but put a boot seal in. I'll also push that through because once there, it's for the fuel center. So once the um, fuel tank's in, that's quite difficult to get to. So I'll just plug that in and tape it up to the um, to the body shell like they normally are. So we'll start doing the boot seal, I think. another thing I've had for a long time and uh, it is a tremendous deal because I think it was four hundred and seventy dollars I think I can't get that out. and the good part about it I mean obviously it's brand new and I want a new one the original tank in this car um, had a huge dent in it, but it was very good inside. But this also comes with all those nuts and bolts, even for the filonek, the filonek gasket, the rubber um, filonek tube and the two clamps. And uh, another thing that it comes with, can you see it down there? I'm not sure you can see it down there, um, is this sender. Now that's a 5 16th hose, which is a bit of a pain because I've got 3 out through the car, but I think we'll chuck that in now. Right, we've got to put this petrol tank in now. Uh, I don't want to scratch the bottom or damage it at all, so I've just got this out of the laundry cupboard. I haven't told Susie. So I'll just sort of put it there, and then I can sort of run a bead of seal around here. Uh, just a mastic seal, and sort of drop the tank onto here, and then sort of lower it down uh, into position nice and slowly. screwdrivers in the holes just to make them line up but I can see very easily where everything's going to go. So I can start putting bolts in. Just get around and give them a quick nip up. And they're all good. Good thing about this kit is it also comes with this gasket which we can throw over the filler and then poke it through. Now I've painted this, I should have plated it, and I didn't, I painted it. Um, because by the time I thought about it, it was too late. So we'll just try and get that in there. And tighten them up. And 
that looks laughable, but it'll keep any nasties out of the tank till I get a proper one. Well, that's all we have for now. I've, I've filled up my uh, video time slot, so to speak. We've got the tank in, we've just got a plumb up underneath it, uh, and we're ready to put petrol in and pretty much start the car. So, I'm going to leave it there. In the next video, we will have the boot lid on. I'm still sort of getting that prepared at the moment. Uh, we'll buff out the bonnet, because that still needs buffing. Um, and basically concentrate on the interior. The interior is terrible. Well, that's not even there. So we've got to do that in the next video. There's only going to be two more videos. There's, um, there's the next one, which I've just outlined. And in the final video, it's the big stuff. So it's bumper bars, tyres, uh, full exhaust system, uh, tail shaft. And then we get it roadworthy and drive it around. But that last video, because there's so much expensive stuff on it, um, probably a few grand's worth of stuff in terms of, well, probably two and a half in terms of tyres and bumpers and all this sort of stuff, it just means that might be in a few months or a couple of months. I need to save up for that. But the next one, the interior one, we should have uh, in about a month's time. The deadline for this car is November this year. So we've got seven months. It's now the end of March, so we've got seven months, plenty of time. But um, the deadline's November. But I do need to come up with quite a few dollars to finish the car off. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. See you later.